So how, how can you use AI for education then? I think it also goes back to that, like, you know, we had so many advanced AI applications and mm. then we stumbled upon, I mean, one of the, one a very interesting AI company right here in Stockholm, in Sana Labs, yeah, who are nice. working with using AI for education. I mean, they're focusing their business model on adult education, mm. but the principle is the same. Cast individual. When you said adult education, I was thinking something else, but yeah. Okay, I, I yeah. Know <laughs> <laughs> Professional education <laughs> for nurses. And I mean, yeah. they've, they've trained a lot of nurses during COVID to how to handle the pandemic. Yeah. So basically using AI to personalize your education journey, which all research shows. So lifelong learning in some sense, life not, not yeah. just education in, in universities, so to speak. No, mm -hmm. and like the opposite of just educating everyone the same way, mm -hmm. since our brains work differently and mature at different paces. I mean, it's so obvious that that is something that needs to happen. Just think Spotify, you know, does everyone want to listen to exactly the same playlist all the time? Yeah. No, you want a personalized playlist. Why shouldn't exactly. you have a personalized, you know, educational list, yeah. so to speak? And it's we know kids, especially kids when they're around 10, mm. can differ several years in how maturity. mature they are to understanding math. Yeah. And yeah. still they're supposed to learn trigon trigonometry at the exact same date. And if they fail at that point, they probably lost interest for math all their lives. Right. Such an obvious thing when you hear about it, but strange that we haven't gotten further, but at least there are some good examples in startups in Sweden, et cetera. But isn't this another that. topic then? Like, like we, we talk about this, um, about data literacy and AI literacy and all that. And, and, and it's really about education, adult learning on a massive scale, right? Because we have super data AI scientists who needs to actually learn how to talk to domain lingo you know, how do I use this cool tech in relation to healthcare? Oh, well, I really need to learn this part. And then vice versa, we all lift, need to lift our game fundamentally in order to be take part in this in these new teams. So it's, it's a massive learning. <coughs> it is challenge. massive learning. And it's also, it also has massive implications in yeah. how it fundamentally challenges our system, how we work. Yeah. I mean, we created our education system and our healthcare system over a hundred years ago, mm. based on the limitations of resources. How mm. many people, how many people can we treat with one person? Mm. And now we have a different system. And we've also understood that symptoms are connected. <laughs> if you have an illness here, it's probably connected to your gut flora or whatever, but we still educate doctors to be specialized. And if you have a symptom, you have to. So we're moving into the next topic, guys, uh, I think. And, and we spoke about AI and education for yeah. some time and, and the obvious need for one to educate people what AI is. Yeah. But secondly, to simply use AI for education as well to, to make it more personalized and more efficient and really you know, bring up the strengths and weak weaknesses of each person in some way. Right? But also one thing in education, the yeah. other side is we have hundreds of thousands of teachers right. who spend 50% of their time on administration. Right. AI can automate that. AI, so for, AI so, for education is also to free up quality time. Yeah, so teachers yeah. can spend time with children, yeah. which is why they became teachers in the first place. Which yeah. is such a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, I think, a big misunderstanding many, many people have. They think AI is this kind of really advanced type of technology. And we've been so used to, you know, the more advanced some technology is, the more you have to scroll down some menu somewhere, fill out some form, which is really hard to understand. But I would argue that AI really removes that instead yeah. and makes all the communication and interfaces much more natural. So it's actually less of administration. And I, I really wish people understood that, you know, AI is not something that makes administration harder. It really is the opposite. Yeah. Right? And that's where uh, hopefully now we're going to start in Gothenburg with, because then we have very, very excited principals and school leaders just there who mm. are interested in AI. So mm. hopefully we can get a pilot going and find some good use case. And yeah. when we find that, then hopefully people will understand, oh God, this is what it can do. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you used to leave that, you know, but the whole learning curve and if we want to have aug augmented intelligence or if we want to do this, I guess a huge topic will be also how we get this to become seamless in the way we normally interact. You know, that, that's so the UX part of this becomes that's that's the whole niche in itself. Augment, you know, UX for AI into UX in, in a seamless way. Yeah, must be. 
super big topic. I mean, like, so you have something yeah. super cool, but it's actually too convoluted to use it. Yeah. But it, it doesn't need to have, be that way. No, it will move in the other way, I think. That's probably a, a field that need, probably is going to expand. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, UX I had this uh, conversation with, with, with someone who said, oh, she, um, someone who sort of was seeking a mentor and, and, and she was into, I want to go into UX. Mm. And I say, you know, you have a kick-ass field for yourself now if you, if you start to learn this. Mm. Uh, uh, U, UX augmented with AI. Yeah. You know, what is that all about? And just to close the topic as well about AI and education, if we were to look forward like five years, what do you think, this is a hard question of course, but what do you think um, uto ut utopian kind of view of education will look like would be? My, my hope is that we've done a school reform mm -hmm. where kids get uh, customized education right. and they get to focus on what they are best at at that time. Yeah. So and what they need at that time. Yeah, what they <laughs> need at that time. So we have a hundred percent of kids finishing school with full full grades. Mm. But it's a school reform needed in order to basically say one size does not fit all. Yes. Mm. It's a beautiful future. I, I certainly <laughs> hope, hope that will happen.